Okay, so we're going to look at other ways to strengthen polymers. And we're going to try to use our little model of polymers as a bunch of entangled uh, strings to see if we can come up with, with an, uh, another way. <clears throat> so remember, what we're trying to do is we're going to stretch this thing out. And what we're trying to do is, or what we're thinking about is, how hard is it to pull one molecule away from its neighbors? And I introduced uh, my idea of a uh, atomic level or molecular level hand, and you're gonna you're gonna pull this thing away and see if you can move one molecule away from the next. That's yielding, that's melting, that's dissolution. So how could we make that more difficult? And so I'd like to give you an example or a, 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 something to compare to. You know, what if we, well, here, here we go. What if we said, okay, these, we can treat these as, as strings. We said, but what about if we actually just go to the spaghetti um, model? So there's spaghetti, and then, you know, you, you've got a big plate of spaghetti or some other kind of noodle in front of you, um, and you, you, you pick up a noodle to eat. And if they're really, really long noodles, if they're really long, you know it can be a bit of a challenge to eat it uh, uh, gracefully. Right? You pick up one noodle and the whole plate comes with you. Whereas if you look at the other extreme, you want to feed spaghetti um, or some noodles to a baby, what do you do? Well, you, you cut them up. right? You, you cut them up, you get a pair of scissors or something like that, and you cut them up. So what you actually have now is a bunch of these little short noodles. And now, of course, you know that it's it's quite easy to take a spoon, say, and grab one, a few of those and pull them away. It's, it's easy to... Get your little molecular level hand there, there it is, and and grab one of those things and pull it away. And so it's quite easy to, to move a molecule away from its neighbors if they're short and harder if they're longer. So we actually have another strengthening mechanism. We can strengthen by increasing the length of the molecule, uh, increasing uh, molecule length. And I'll make a little side note here that we could refer to the length of the molecule and describe molecules in terms of exactly how, they, how long they are. There's actually another way that we typically do it and, and um, I'll give you an example. Instead of length, what we do is we actually talk about the weight. So, so can you imagine, imagine that we've got a box. Okay, we've got a box and inside that box I tell you there's some rope. Okay, there's some rope in there. But the box is all closed up and I'm not gonna let you open it, but you know the mass of the box. And the only other thing that I tell you is over here I've got a length of the rope. Okay, say it's uh, you know it's one meter, and I allow you to weigh that. So if you know the mass of this one meter of rope, and you know that this box is full of the same rope, but a single length of it and you know the mass of this box, you could determine how long the rope is inside the box. So what we've done is we've used, by taking the mass, we've used the mass as a sort of a substitute for the length, or a way of calculating the length. And so, you know, I think partly because these molecules are so disorganized, they're not straight. It, it doesn't really make sense to, to describe them in, in length units. And also because of the way they're synthesized by repeating that little mer unit, it makes more sense to refer to um, how heavy the molecule is as a way of describing the length. So that's what we do. Instead of using length, we actually uh, refer to uh, molecular weight. Okay, molecular weight. So that's a, that's a term. I'm going to put it in yellow for you. There you go. So it's a molecular molecular weight. So uh, going forward, if you hear the word uh, or the term molecular weight, just remember in your head, oh, okay, we're actually describing the length. High molecular weight is, um, high, is a long molecule. On average, they're long. And low molecular weight would be shorter. So an example would be in biomaterials we use in, in hip implants, for example, um, U-H-M-W-P. Uh, E, quite a mouthful, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. So ultra high molecular weight means these are really, really long molecules of polyethylene. And 
Um, they're used in, in implant materials, hip implants particularly, because it's quite a demanding mechanical environment. It's a lot of um, hip implant, uh, hip implants, um, because uh, yeah, there's a lot of load on the joint, and there's a lot of frictional forces, and you could have quite extensive wear if the polymer wasn't strong enough. So ultra high molecular weight polyethylene helps to reduce uh, wear debris and uh, allow the implant to last longer. So, okay, we've covered molecular weight. Increasing molecular weight is a strengthening mechanism. Uh, are there are there other ways that we could we could strengthen the uh, the molecule? Well, yeah, there's there certainly are, and we can partly use well, we can use our little model here to explain that. So here we go. We got these molecules, and what I've told you so far is that these molecules are just when I draw the line and they cross over, they're they're not bonded to each other. But what if we actually did go into this system? somehow and create little connections between molecules and st with strong bonds, the same kind of bonds that are holding the molecule itself together. So, And that's why I'm actually trying to use the same color here just to show that the chemistry uh, could be, well it could be slightly different, but it, it's, it's, they're strong bonds. Okay, so these, these little, these are strong, strong or, or primary Okay, but we'll cover that definition later if you haven't heard of it. So these are strong bonds, and they are between molecules. So now we, we go and you say, you think, okay, well, what, what, what's going to happen if we try to, here's my hand, <laughs> pull one of these things away, you know, and that's through the application of an uh, external load or through increasing temperature or dissolution um, with, a, with a solvent molecule. Well, it's difficult to do because there's this really strong bond there that's holding this chain to this one and so on. So by, by introducing these really strong bonds between chains, we can strengthen it. Um, and that's actually called cross-linking. So cross-linking. It's actually quite uh, important in, um, in in elastomers, rubber materials. They're cross-linked to achieve the properties that uh, make them very useful. Um, it's also used in other materials. Um, let's see, what's a good example? Um, in uh, residential water supplies, you may have heard of PEX. Okay, as an example, PEX. Well, that's Polyethylene cross-linked. It's cross-linked polyethylene increases the strength and the resistance to higher temperature. You know, hot water, for example. Um, there's there's many examples of uh, cross-linking um, to increase the the strength of a material. An extreme case of cross-linking is actually when you uh, form what we call a network polymer, where the primary bonds actually go off and in, in form a very tight network. Uh, basically a macromolecule almost, the entire thing is one molecule, but uh, we'll leave that for another time. What, what else could we do then if we wanted to strengthen? So we know we, we could strengthen through increasing molecular weight, through cross-linking. Are there other ways? And we'll just go back to this, this model here, and we're not going to cross-link it this time, but instead we're going to see, well, we know that there's some kind of frictional forces or interactions these weaker interactions between the polymers, particularly you know where they come quite close to each other, is there would there be a way that we could uh, make the nature of these little frictional or interaction, these secondary interactions stronger? Could we could we strengthen these relatively weak bonds? Right. Could we do that? Yeah, yeah, we could. And this is a point where we, we really have to dive back, dive into a deeper level model of the polymer. And so that's the one that we had introduced a little bit earlier, where we still really started to look at the chemistry and look at the um, the, the molecules. <clears throat> and so you can you can design the chemistry so that there's a, a little bit of a, a charge attraction. So I'll give you an example, and we'll explore it in more detail in a separate uh, in a separate topic. An example is polyvinyl chloride (PVC). So the chloride the chlor uh, chloride there means that there's there's this chlorine atom that's added to the to the mer unit, 
So we've got carbon, carbon, and there's a chlorine instead of uh, where one of the hydrogens would have been for polyethylene. And it's actually really interesting that chlorine there is a bit of a, I like to say, it's a bit of a bully. Um, <laughs> so chlorine is one of these elements that really strongly attracts electrons. Strongly attracts electrons. Um, and, and so what happens is the electrons start to, they get sort of pulled over towards the chlorine, which gives a little bit of a negative charge. A little negative charge over on the chlorine. And <clears throat> so then when you have another molecule of um, of poly, uh, polyvinyl chloride in, in the vicinity, uh, well, correction, that's supposed to be an H, um, then this little par partial negative uh, charge, which would also be on, on this chlorine, can, can uh, be attracted to another molecule, the partial uh, or the little bit um, positive end of another. So this is now this attraction between molecules, but it's between what we call polar molecules, molecules with a little bit of charge. So I've been vague in my description here um, intentionally because what we're starting to see is this is a limitation of this model, at least of our understanding so far. So what we need to do now is we need um, a little bit more detail in the nature of the molecule and that's going to lead into this nice little discussion of really what these secondary, that's secondary, that, that symbol there too with a degree, means secondary, secondary bonds or secondary interactions. We need to really understand when, I, when I've talked about these frictional type things, what, what is it? What's really going on? And so what, that's what we're going to do. We're going to explore this. And certainly there are very, very important ways that we can increase the strength of those bonds in order to increase the strength of the molecule or the polymer. And PVC is a certain example of that.